After receiving a mixed bag of backlash as well as support from the YouTube community, Jacqueline Glenn released a new video about why she exposed previously unknown details about the Eugenia Cooney intervention. In the video, Jacqueline discusses her motives, intentions, and concerns. But was this the right thing to do? Many of us can relate to the experience of having a friend who is suffering, so let's see what we can all learn from this. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I try to do is take different topics going on in the YouTube community and try to see what lessons we can pull from them to improve our own mental and emotional well-being. And something that I'm extremely passionate about is mental health. So if you're into any of that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So real quick, if you didn't get the memo yet, my brand new book, Cancelled Inside YouTube Cancel Culture is now out and it is free. It's at my website, www.therewiredsoul.com. Link down in the description and in the pinned comment. We examine cancel culture. And there's some stuff going on with this Jacqueline Glenn and Eugenia Cooney situation where we, we kind of see like mob mentality. We kind of see people taking sides and things like that. But anyways, go check out the book. Cancel culture is a major problem. It's really toxic here on YouTube. The book's free. And thank you for like the hundreds of people who have already downloaded it. Mwah. You're all amazing, love you. So before we get started and I jump into this, I just wanna introduce myself for those of you who don't know me. Hi, my name's Chris, I'm a drug addict and alcoholic. Uh, I just celebrated seven years clean and sober uh, about a month ago. Yesterday was a month away from my birthday. So yeah, I celebrated seven years sober on June 23rd. So throughout my addiction, I had many relapses. My family had many interventions for me, all right? Not only that, but I worked at a drug and alcohol treatment center for a little over three years and part of my job was having interventions for people and I have helped hundreds of people get into treatment okay so I'm very experienced when it comes to interventions so that's kind of the angle that I'm taking when I discuss this topic about Jacqueline Glenn and Eugenia Cooney and for any of you out there who have a loved one who is struggling with either mental health issues or even an addiction I have a book that I wrote a couple years ago called caught in the crossfire I'll link it down below it's only three dollars but in that book, I write different strategies of how to help a loved one, how to have an intervention. But the goal of that book is to help you stay kind of sane throughout that whole process. So like I said, it's only three bucks, so if you need help figuring out how to do an intervention, check out the description down below. Jacqueline Glenn just released her video, Why I Spoke Out About Eugenia Cooney, where she goes more in depth about why she released her previous two videos. In this video, we're going to discuss the various angles of this situation from both Jacqueline's perspective as well as the perspective of Eugenia Cooney. By the way, if you haven't yet, I highly suggest you watch my previous video. It'll be linked up in the info card. In that video, we discuss how family members can either hurt or help your recovery. There's some topics from that video that we'll revisit in this one, but if you want some more in-depth information about what's going on with Eugenia Cooney's mother and how that plays a role in her recovery, make sure you go check that video out first. Come back, check this video out. So, first thing is, although I'm going to be critical of Jacqueline in this video, just know that I agree somewhat with Jacqueline. Like any of you who know me, you know that I am no stranger to talking about the dangers of enabling. I've seen many people die because of enabling and it's one reason why I'm so vocal about it. I just don't get it. Some people say, yeah, maybe she's enabling, but that's not that bad. I don't really even see it as enabling. You know, enabling is, let's say you have a kid that has a, a drug problem and you don't cut them off financially because you're worried about them for whatever reason, and then they use your money for the wrong reasons, then maybe, yeah, you're enabling them. But are you really enabling someone when you say, you know what, you don't have a problem. You're fine. You don't need to worry about it. You don't need to work on anything. You're fine. And not only are you fine, if anybody tries to step in and help you, I'm gonna fight them. I'm gonna tell them to back off. I'm gonna tell them they're bad friends. I'm gonna try to tell you to leave that situation where they're trying to get you help. So in this clip, the other examples that Jacqueline explains are other examples of enabling. That is enabling. What we need to realize is that enabling and codependency often go hand in hand. Psych Central in this article explains codependency as this. Codependency is characterized 
by a person belonging to a dysfunctional, one-sided relationship where one person relies on the other for meeting nearly all of their emotional and self-esteem needs. It also describes a relationship that enables another person to maintain their irresponsible, addictive, or underachieving behavior. So in order for codependency to be overcome, one or both people are typically going to need therapy. Codependency can lead to both people staying sick, but when it comes to Eugenia and her mother, we don't know how much therapy both of them have received, and that's something I discussed in my last video. But it's for her best interests, and I will not for one second regret doing that intervention, ever. And for the same reason, going public with this information that I feel could potentially help her because she's still in a very dangerous place is something that I just can't, I couldn't live with myself if something happened and I had said nothing. I wanted to show that clip because we all need to ask, and Jacqueline needs to ask herself, how can she possibly know with absolute certainty that Eugenia isn't safe? At this point, Jacqueline Glenn knows as much about Eugenia Cooney as the rest of us. Jacqueline has stated that she has not spoken to Eugenia since Eugenia went to treatment. All Jacqueline knows is that Eugenia went to treatment, looks happy and healthy, shares motivational mental health messages on Twitter, and that her mom was across the country at the time of the Shane Dawson video. Nobody except Jacqueline knows her true motives and intentions, but I choose to believe that she was worried. It seems as though Jacqueline believes that the critics are mainly upset that she had an intervention for Eugenia, but I don't think that's the primary issue. The issue is that she released details of the story that Eugenia may not have been comfortable with going public. So to give you a primary example, seven years ago, right before I got clean and sober this last time, my family had an intervention and I was a crazy person, okay? It was my mom, my dad, and two of my cousins, right, having an intervention, begging me to stop what I was doing, begging me to get help. And in that intervention, I said terrible things. I called my mom, who was just trying to save my life, I called her every name that you should never call a woman, let alone a mother, all right? Those of you who don't know, my mom is coming up on 14 years sober. She was seven years sober when she helped me get sober, all right? So I was losing it on her. But here's the thing, from Eugenia Cooney's perspective, I share that story. Right now, I'm sharing that story with you. I'm telling you how crazy I was during that situation. But it's a much different scenario if my mother were to go out and share that story and talk about the way I acted. It'd be a lot different, you know what I mean? Because it's my story. Now, I, like, don't get me wrong, I'm at a place in my recovery where I don't mind my mom sharing that story, but I have to imagine in Eugenia's position right now, like especially that early on in recovery, I don't know if I'd be comfortable with someone sharing that much information. And listen, listen, despite not agreeing with how Jacqueline Glenn went about this, like, I, I choose to see the glasses half full. Like, I am so happy that the internet right now is talking about interventions. Like, something that you, you see from Jacqueline Glenn's video is the brutal truth. Like, interventions are messy, all right? Like, Jacqueline Glenn talks about how, like, she had a taser and she was, like, afraid. And, like, well, that's not what happens in all interventions. Like, that's the reality of this situation. And that's why, you know, I, I appreciate being able to work in the mental health field. Like, there are anybody out there, like, thank your therapist, thank your psychologist, whoever out there, like, this is something that we deal with on a regular basis. And this is something that you could potentially walk into when you're having an intervention. Like, a great example, if you've ever watched intervention, on a and &E, you've seen some stuff go down. Like they're not always just like pretty little situations where it's like, okay, sit down, we want you to go to treatment. Okay, I'll go to treatment. Like that's not always how it goes down. In fact, that's very rarely how it goes down. Because with diseases like addiction or even eating disorders, it's a mental illness that tells you that you don't have a problem, you know what I mean? In the video, Jacqueline shares a story about a friend she had who unfortunately took her own life. 
Her friend was in an abusive household and Jacqueline holds on to the guilt that she could have done more to help her friend just by speaking up. Jacqueline then explains how she doesn't want to live with that guilt again and that's why she spoke up about Eugenia Cooney. So listen, like I said, I can empathize so much with Jacqueline Glenn. Like this is, this is something that happened with me as well. Like when my ex-girlfriend, who was also one of my best friends, died at the age of 24, I lived with that guilt forever. I still have some guilt about it. Like, what could I have done? I could have done more. What I should have done this, I should have done that. Replaying the scenario a million times. And I can also empathize with Jacqueline Glenn because I had to help my friend's family have an intervention for my best friend four years ago, okay? I knew he was gonna be mad. I knew he was gonna be angry. I knew he might hate me forever, but today he's four years clean. I'm very fortunate that he's back in my life and you know, he thanks me to this day, but I went into that situation knowing that at the end of the day, if he no longer wants to be friends with me, at least if he gets help, mission accomplished. So something that I just think that Jacqueline as well as all of us need to ask is, what is the end goal here? Does Jacqueline want Eugenia to never speak to her mom again? Because we know that's most likely not going to happen because even Jacqueline acknowledges that she knows how much Eugenia loves and cares for her mom. Another question is, like, does Jacqueline Glenn want Eugenia's mom to go to jail? From the information we have, Eugenia's mom hasn't done anything illegal, and Eugenia is an adult. Something that I mentioned in my last video is, we have to ask ourselves, is it possible that Eugenia's mom did try to get Eugenia help at some point, but Eugenia was resistant? Jacqueline Glenn states that she wants Eugenia to move out of that house, but again, at this point, we know that her and her mom aren't together all of the time because her mom was in another state at the time of the filming for the Shane Dawson video. Although many of us can empathize with Jacqueline's concern, we also need to remember that eating disorders are not the same as other mental illnesses like addiction. We're not discussing a case where Eugenia is a recovering drug addict with her mom offering her drugs. Eugenia is recovering from an eating disorder. So unless her mom was actively depriving Eugenia of food, this is a much different situation. So listen, to end this video, I just wanna make it very clear. Jacqueline might be right. She might be a thousand percent right about Eugenia's mom, but the reality is is that we do not have the evidence to prove that at this point you know what I mean so in my personal opinion and I would love to know your thoughts on this down down below I don't think that this was the right time so I guess the last thing I'll, I'll say if I was in Jacqueline's shoes okay Worst case scenario, I would have made a video, a very vague video, like if I couldn't reach Eugenia and say, hey Eugenia, I'm glad you're back, right? I'm glad that you went to treatment. Hey, but I still have some concerns. And if you ever need a place to stay, come stay with me. It could have been a 30 second video. You know what I mean? But without the evidence, without all of those things, right? I personally would wait, okay? I would wait. We know Eugenia got help. We know Eugenia went through therapy, whether it was involuntary or not, no matter what it was, we know it was involuntary. But the thing is, like Jacqueline has only seen Eugenia in the Shane Dawson video after treatment and Eugenia seems to be happy. Like, trust me, I will make a follow-up video. Like I, like I said, like I showed you the video I did about Taylor Nicole Dean that got me in a lot of trouble. I will be the first one to make a video if we get evidence that Eugenia Cooney's mother is enabling her or helping Eugenia to potentially relapse. But like I said, like we don't have enough evidence. And if you want some more information, watch my last video about it. Like uh, in that video I discussed, like in treatment, like family therapy is a thing. So it's very possible that Eugenia's mother is also healing and they're working on maybe their codependent relationship. You know what I mean? But anyways, like I said, check down in the description below. My brand new book, Cancelled is out. It's free if you'd like to check that out. And if you're somebody who needs to have an intervention at some time, my 
other book, Caught in the Crossfire is out. It's only three bucks. Check down in the description below. All right, but anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And a huge thank you to everybody, all of you who have downloaded the book already and all of you who have donated to the cause. Mwah! I love you all so, 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 so much. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.